Hello students, this is Mr. Lawback. In this video, we are going to go over immigration in the middle portion of the 1800s or the 19th century. So what we will specifically go over is the cause of this immigration wave, Irish and German immigrants because they were the most common immigrants, nativism and anti-immigrant discrimination and prejudice. One of the driving factors in the shift from an agricultural to an industrial economy in the United States was the implementation of new technologies and subsequent shifts in population from rural to urban areas. A byproduct of this industrialization and opportunity was a boom in immigration in the mid-1800s. In the Northeast in particular, massive waves of immigration boosted the number of people living in cities, but also immigrants moved in large numbers to the West and the Midwest as well. Percentage-wise, not many European immigrants moved to the South for reasons of lack of employment opportunity. Remember, the South was not nearly as industrialized as the North. And an agricultural society, the main worker in the South, was the enslaved population. After the Revolutionary War and until the War of 1812, immigration to the United States was pretty stagnant. This was in no small part to the French Revolution and hostilities between France, Great Britain, and the United States. But between 1820 and the 1860s, 5 million people immigrated to the United States. Again, this was known as the first wave, or old immigrants. The second wave, or new immigrants, arrived to the United States between the 1890s and the early 1900s. Between the 1820s and the 1860s, two-thirds of these immigrants came from Ireland and Germany. The other third came from a variety of nations, but mostly Britain and Scandinavian nations. Many of these immigrants were willing to work long hours for less money and were looking for opportunity in the United States. Because of the flourishing Industrial Revolution and Market Revolution in the United States, America was a perfect fit for many of these immigrants. Many of these immigrants worked in labor-intensive factories, on railroads, and building canals. Many of them were also farmers. So in addition to the increase in birth rate, the U.S. saw a large population growth due to immigration as well. But not only was it population growth, but it changed the character and culture of American society as well. So let's talk more about the two main immigrant groups to the United States during this period, the Irish and the Germans. First, the Irish. The Irish was the largest group. Back in Ireland, there were desperate living conditions and overpopulation. This made mass immigration from Ireland inevitable. Beginning in 1845, a blight destroyed three successive potato crops. This became known as the Potato Famine. One million Irish died from starvation and disease, while another 1.7 million immigrated to the United States. Most Irish immigrants settled in northeastern port cities. By 1860, the Irish comprised one-third of the population in New York City and Boston. Baltimore and Philadelphia were also big destinations for Irish immigrants. Most Irish immigrants were forced to work in the lowest paying, most demanding unskilled jobs. Many of them were uneducated. The percentage of Irish workers employed in the Lowell Mills jumped from 8% in 1845 to 50% in 1860. The Erie Canal also employed many Irish immigrants. Irish voters supported the Democrats as the party of the, quote, common man. Irish bosses soon played a key role in the formation of big city political machines, which we will learn about later on in American history. The Irish played a major role in the growth of the Catholic Church in the United States. The number of Catholic churches in America increased from 700 in 1840 to 2,500 in 1860. Catholic churches also ran Catholic schools and served as a community center for their localities. The Germans were the second largest group of immigrants to the United States during this time period. Political instability and economic unrest prompted over 1.5 million Germans to immigrate to the United States between 1830 and 1860. German immigrants typically settled in more rural areas in the Midwest rather than East Coast port cities, although many did settle in port cities, most of them moved to more rural areas. The rural areas of Pennsylvania, Ohio, New York, Kentucky, Illinois, Wisconsin, and Michigan were a common destination. German immigrants were a very diverse group that included exiled political refugees 
and displaced farmers. Although the majority of Germans were Protestant, about one-third were Catholics, and a significant number were Jewish. Compared to their Irish counterparts, Germans tended to be more educated and oftentimes had more resources than Irish immigrants. And generally speaking, German immigrants prospered during this time a little more than Irish immigrants. Now, nativism and anti-Catholic sentiment. One unfortunate trend that occurred during the various waves of immigration to the United States was a rising attitude of nativism. Much of it was fueled by religious strife. Nativists were motivated also by fear of immigrants taking their job. They claimed that they would bring crime and disease to the United States and that they would generally erode American culture. Almost all of the Irish and many of the German immigrants were Catholic, while the majority of Americans prior to the 19th century were Protestant. Anti-Catholic rioting occurred in many American cities, some of it violent in nature. Nativist political parties, such as the American Party or the Know Nothing Party, emerged in the 1840s, and these parties actively campaigned to prevent foreign-born people from becoming citizens and to prevent them from holding public office, and generally discriminate against them. Now, the Know Nothing Party got their name because they were a semi-secret society, and when people asked about them, they would simply reply, I know nothing, and that nickname stuck. Riding upon the anti-immigrant mentality and anxiety that many Americans felt about the United States changing demographics, nativist parties won elections in several states in the 1850s. After the Republicans gained dominance in the 1860s, the nativist parties largely fell into decline. Anti-Irish sentiment was so commonplace during the mid-19th century that there were even popular songs that decried the anti-Irish found in many cities where N-I-N-A, Nina, or No Irish Need Apply, was regularly affixed to job postings. The Know Nothings marked the beginning of a recurring pattern of nativist opposition to immigration. During the late 1890s and early 1900s, the second wave of new immigrants saw an outburst of nativist sentiments as well. So some big takeaways. The first wave of old immigrants, German and Irish, Scandinavian and British, certainly changed the political, economic, and cultural vibe in the United States. Catholicism created a divide. Remember, most Americans were Protestants, and a lot of people were skeptical of Catholics for a variety of reasons, but many of them thought they would be more allegiant to the Vatican and the Pope instead of the United States. Nativism and anti-immigration sentiments are a common American trend throughout history, unfortunately, and we will see this time and time again. And at different points in history, different groups tend to be the target of this anti-immigration sentiment. 